Hello everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another Mic Reviews. I'm here to do another Mic Reviews the UFC for the upcoming card Sunday, May 28th. Uh, it's a co-main event between Volkan Ozdemir, number 5 ranked in the world, and number 7 light heavyweight Misha Serkinov. Um, it's a great matchup. Um, both good strikers. Serkinov with incredible submissions. Um, they both had some success in wrestling. Um, Volkan Ozdemir, if you don't know who he is, um, it's a guy who's been around. He's been in a ton of fight leagues. Um, he's been in Shudo. He was in Lions FC. He, uh, he was in Bellator. Um, he's coming off his UFC debut, and he came in as a last-minute replacement against Ovin St. Pru, a hugely talented light heavyweight uh, that really gave John Jones a some issues. I mean, he made him look bad. He, the fight wasn't close, but he made him look bad against the best in the world. And uh, Ozdemir came in a heavy underdog, and he won a decision. Um, he looked pretty impressive, and he landed a lot of shots, and he impressed some people. Um, Mr. Serkinov comes out of extreme couture. He's won all four of his fights in the UFC back to August of 2015. He's a very solid wrestler. Super strong, probably has the best submissions of any 205 out there, in my opinion, and in a lot, a lot of people's opinion. Uh, Volkan has the power advantage. Uh, he's had some impressive knockouts. He's ended 70% of his fights by knockouts. He lands a lot, but in videos of both the OSP fight and his lone loss to Kelly Anderson and Bellator, uh, I see him getting hit a lot. He seems to be an easy target to find. Um, also, even though he stuffed OSP's takedowns to keep it standing, um, in the Kelly Anderson fight, Anderson threw him around like a rag doll. I mean, Anderson's from American Top Team. He is a good wrestler. I don't think he's a great wrestler. He's certainly not as strong as Serkinov, but this was also three years ago. So how much better has Volkan gotten since then? I don't know. Um, he certainly... The target was there against OSP, though. I mean, he he hit and got hit. And uh, Serkinov is certainly an accurate striker and certainly can land. Um, as you can see, almost a 53% accuracy, 70% defense. Um, Volkan, you know, 59% defense, that's... That's really horrible, uh, especially being that only one of his fights have been in the UFC. Two of his fights were in Bellator uh, with his lone loss, and he was 1-1 one one in Bellator. Um, so Serkinov has a 2-inch height and reach advantage, height and reach advantage, as you can see, and a lot better defense. A lot better defense, guys, and... Um, when I first looked at this fight, I, I looked at Volkan. I looked at the rankings, of course. I looked at the record. I looked at his last fight against OSP. And I thought, man, this could be a good bet for somebody who likes to bet on fights. I'm not one who bets on fights. But, you know, 3-1 to one odds, uh, as good as any to roll the dice. And, and maybe it's still as good as any to roll the dice on a 3-1. to one. But the more I started looking at this, uh, the more I could see what the odds maker were looking at. And I see this fight as being very lopsided when it comes to the wrestling and the submission part of the game. Um, Serkinov also, I believe, has a huge cardio advantage and defensive advantage. Um, the only thing I see Volkan having is power and leg kicks. The guy does have some devastating leg kicks. Um you look up his highlights on YouTube, he's, he has some super impressive light kicks. Um, but overall, I think uh, Serkano's superior wrestling, cardio, and his accurate striking take the day. Um, of course, Volkan could, Volkov, Volkan, sorry, could uh, prove me wrong. He could land a bomb at any time. He has in a ton of fights. Um that's why I, I wouldn't bet either side of this fight. I don't think there's really an upside to this. I think the risk outweighs the reward. But my prediction is that Serkinov beats Ozdemir up in the first two rounds. I uh, beats him in striking, takes him down at will. Uh, 
Volkan is exhausted by the third round, and Serganov sinks in a submission in the third round to end the fight. Probably a rear naked choke. Um, Ozdemir gave his back up a lot to, in his fight against Anansen and ended up losing to a neck crank. Um, either way, I, I do think this is a very interesting fight. I think it's a good co-main event between the number five and the number seven, and I think you guys will enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Mike Reviews It All. And as always, please donate to your local food bank because nobody should be hungry. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you like what I do and want to see more videos, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you want to talk about the fights, I really would like to hear your opinion. Uh, put your opinion down in the comments and what you'd like to see from me more. Thank you very much, guys. As always, I appreciate each and every viewer. And Until next time, have a great week.